Okay, hello everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. We got a little bit of a late start on the pre-broadcast here because I had a little bit of a computer issue. So if you hear a little uh, sound in the background, it's a fan that I set up against my laptop, which is getting quite hot. So if anyone wants to comment on why my laptop would get so hot that it shut down, I'm all ears. Anyway, hopefully we'll get through this okay. Uh, we have a really special guest today, uh, John Bollinger, legendary, doesn't need uh, any introduction really, and his daughter, Zoe Bollinger, will be talking about uh, trading opportunities using Bollinger Bands, which are, I'm sure if you've been around trading at all, very familiar to you. But it's really great to have them with us. He doesn't do a lot of uh, public speaking these days, so it's really a great opportunity, and I know you're going to enjoy uh, the time that you spend together today. Uh, we will be getting started here in about two minutes. Uh, go ahead and let me know that you are getting, hello Garth Nichols, hello Kelly Clement. Uh, let me know that you are getting good sound and audio right now before we get started, that'd be helpful. Uh, we are broadcasting, simultane simulcasting this on YouTube and um, go to webinars. So it's pretty much the same experience. But uh, if you have any problems with GoToWebinar or, or yeah, with YouTube today, you can go over to GoToWebinar and by uh, just registering uh, on our website, it'll show you how to get there. Something happens. I'm just a little leery because I had a little bit of an issue right before uh, I wanted to get started today. So anyway, it looks like they're there and we're here and we'll be starting in about a minute and 30. Nor up, oh, thank you so much for saying so. Uh, Maverick G and Brocho, that the audio sounds good. Uh, we have about a minute and 20 seconds. Normally at this point, I would talk, I would show you a video about Metastock and give you a little intro. We don't really have time for that today. Uh, but I will let you know that we do have the our mega online traders conference coming up on February, uh, February 26th. Uh, it is this uh, to, oh, when I rebooted it, it went away. Okay. Metastock grows with you. Back here. Anyway, we have a, a trainer's conference <laughs> uh, on Fe February 26th through May 3rd. Six-day event. If you want to register for it, it is absolutely free and is super awesome. And just go to metastock.com. There's a very large banner on the top of the page, and you can register there. Uh, while I'm thinking of something, I need to make sure that I'm ready to go in this regard. Excuse me, folks. I'm sort of uh, multitasking here. We got about 20 seconds. How, how about this? I let you uh, let's listen to some jazz music, but don't forget that you can ask questions and like and subscribe, and we would really appreciate that. So five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. Everybody, uh, Jeff Gibby here at Metastock. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Cassie, you did say there was a little bit of echoing and repeating. Well, that's not still happening. Uh, sometimes that happens when a couple of mics are live. We won't have a, a, that happen very often during the event. So you should be able to hear us. It should be coming through well. It shouldn't be any echo. In any case, my name is Jeff Gibby. I want to say thank you for coming, whether you're watching this here on YouTube or go to webinar or whatever it might be. If you are watching us on YouTube, I'm going to say like and subscribe. Uh, like uh, if you would. Comment if you have questions or if you if you want to. Uh, subscribe. It helps a great deal. We're trying to get up to 70,000 subscribers. And we really appreciate it. So with that all being said, let's kick things off. Thank you for coming. It's good to see you. I hope you're healthy. I hope you feel good today. So let's start with a legal disclaimer. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock in the company software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information software anti-mixed is visited today. 
<laughs> should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Meta stock shall have no liability for any information or for any investment decision based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. I want to add to that that we are not going to endorse that you purchase any security today. We're not paid to endorse any securities. Uh, and as a company, we do not endorse the purchase of any specific securities. What we wanted to do today is provide you a great guest and hopefully help you learn a few things about the market. So um, thanks for coming. Uh, Cassie, did the, uh, did the audio get better? Let me know in the chats. So uh, our guest today, as you know, is John Bollinger and Zoe Bollinger. John Bollinger is best known uh, for the Bollinger Bands and just all of the great uh, <laughs> I just lost all the words that I had. All the great contributions to technical analysis that he's had over the years. It's going to be great to be able to see him and talk to him. I have him on literally as often as he'll agree to. And he's bringing along with him to talk a little bit more about the technical parts of Metastock and all of that kind of good stuff, Zoe, his daughter. And uh, she's also does a really, really good job. We absolutely love both of them. So, Sean, I can see you. I can hear you. Let me go ahead and turn over the screen share to you. Okay, Cassie says that it got better. So, okay, John, and so you should see that the screen has been pointed over to you. And I'll let you know as soon as I can see everything. Cool. And what I can see now is the go to webinar screen. And now what I can see is the trading with Bollinger Bands. There you go. All right. Very cool. I'm going to get out of the way. John, thank you for coming and joining us. And uh, I'll let you have your turn now. Well, thanks, Jeff. It's always a pleasure to um, chat with you and to work with the fine folks at Metastock. Um, I understand that you're on a on a campaign to, to get the number of users up there, subscribers up there on, on YouTube. So um, why don't you, everybody who's attending today, subscribe to youtube and make jeff happy it's really important that jeff be happy you know i mean so um today's presentation will be broken into three parts i'm going to start um with some slides and work through the basics of bollinger bands and a couple of uh, of trading setups that that work well with uh with bollinger bands and then um zoe's going to come on and take you through the bollinger band toolkit on metastock and show you how all of these different tools that we have can be used in the Metastock platform to find opportunities. We're going to talk a lot about that idea of finding opportunities because that's what Bollinger Bands are really uh, about. We're going to talk about finding opportunities where your the, your chances of success are better um, and the amount that you must risk to take the position is less than the potential reward. And those two dimensions are the are the primary dimensions of profitability in trading. So we're going to talk a lot about those. So with that said, let's um, dive right in. Um, trading with Bollinger Bands. Uh, first, um, Bollinger Bands are simply a a type of trading band. Um, there are many other types of trading bands out there. Uh, Donchin and Keltner percent bands. I I could go on. Um, um, but they, they are a type of uh, trading band, and they are specifically a type of very adaptive trading band. That is, as the price structure changes, moves from a consolidation to a trending market, um, back to consolidation, um, so on and so forth, the bands adapt to the price action and keep the definition of relatively high and low germane to the price structure. And that's the key. Um, by definition, prices are high at the upper band. By definition, prices are low at the lower band. Now, that may seem obvious, but in fact, those two definitions allow us to build rigorous trading approaches using Bollinger Bands and companion indicators. And we'll go through all of, all of that today, but I, I really want to keep you to keep that idea in mind. A lot of people think that if you just tag the upper Bollinger Band, that is if price touches the upper Bollinger Band, that that's a sell signal. And, and 
likewise that it price tags or touches the lower Bollinger Band, um, that's a buy signal. Couldn't be further from the truth. Um, for example, um, there are long periods where price can march up the upper Bollinger Band, um, as we've just seen recently in the stock market and in Bitcoin. Um, and there are long periods where prices can march down the lower band, um, as we saw a couple of years ago in the stock market. So there's nothing in and of itself that it, about a tag of the Bollinger Band that is a signal. Yeah, you have to bring more to the party, and that's what we're gonna we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about that bringing more to the party. So here's the definition of Bollinger Bands for those of you who. Um, who um, may not be familiar with them. The middle band is a simple moving average um, of the close. The, the base um, parameter is for 20 periods. Um, and you can adjust that at, at, to suit your trading style. Some people prefer much shorter periods, although I think getting much shorter than 10 periods is probably going to be problematic. Some people like uh, longer than, than 20 periods. In, I think that once you get up to like 50 periods, you ought to think about moving to a higher time frame and back to 20 periods. For example, if you're if you think you know you want to get to 50 or 60 periods using daily bars, um, then I would suggest that you shift back um, to 20 periods and use weekly bars instead. Um, that 20 periods for so, for some reason seems to be a real sweet spot, and then I don't think you want to deviate that far uh, away from it. Um, better that you change the, the amount of time in, in each bar. Um, the upper band is that middle band plus two times the standard deviation. We use the population calculation, and it's the same exact data that was used to construct the middle band. Um, and then the lower band is, the, again, the middle band minus two times the standard deviation. And again, that's the same data window. I, I, th I think that's pretty important. I've seen some people experiment with mismatching um, the, the periods here using longer or shorter periods for the standard deviation. Um, and, you know, I think that could be an interesting idea, but for, for me and our work here, um, I stick with the basic parameters of 20 periods and two times um, plus or minus. One very popular uh, adaption is to plot multiple Bollinger Bands, to plot um, Bollinger Bands that are one, two, and three standard deviations above, and one, two, and three standard deviations below. That's a, a very common variation. So again, the defaults, 20 period moving average, and these are just defaults. Um, simple moving average, plus or minus two standard deviations and the population calculation. And I really stress this, You know, feel free to adapt this to your trading style. If you feel that bands aren't responsive enough, you might, uh, um, you might try using an exponential moving average and exponential Bollinger Bands. They're included in, in the Metastock um, toolkit. If you feel that they're, they're too adaptive, um, you might want to think about lengthening out the, the number of periods from 20 to 25 or 30. So, you know, this is, these are, these are tools. This is not a system and, and adapting them is not a, only fine, it's encouraged. So here's a picture of what Bollinger Bands look like. Um, the blue line is that middle moving average. Um, the red line is the upper Bollinger Band and the green line is the lower Bollinger Band. We'll talk about some of these things that, um, that um, hmm? sorry, we'll talk about some of these uh, um, some of these setups um, as we go through, uh, but note the variability of the width of the bands. That's key to what makes them work. Um, if you look at um, in this area right here, the bands are, are very narrow. We would call that a squeeze. And if you look at this area over here, the bands are very, very wide. We would call that a bulge. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about those uh, squeeze and a bulge and what the definitions are of those. But basically, you can see here that they provide a really good definition of relatively high and relatively low. When we're tagging the upper band, prices are relatively high. When we're tagging the lower band, prices are relatively low. You can also see that in trending markets, prices can walk up the upper band 
and in declining markets, prices can walk down the Bollinger Band. And finally, if you look over at the right-hand side of the chart, you can see that we go through we can go through long consolidation periods where prices um, basically are, are traded in a relatively narrow band, range and the bands flatten out. So I I predominantly use daily bars. It's how I came into the business. I came into the business a long time ago. Trading costs were really high. Um, commissions were high. Spreads were wide. Uh, taxes were, were were onerous and such. So unless you were a professional market maker, trading anything shorter than daily bars was prohibitively expensive. Um, so I learned um, trading daily and weekly bars, and that's still um, my predominant practice. So the charts that you're going to see here today are prim primarily daily bars, um, but they can be adapted um, to whatever your trading style is. If you prefer five-minute bars or one-minute bars or or monthly bars or quarterly bars, all of that works. All of it's just fine. Um, the only thing that's really important is that in each bar, there be enough data to see the price formation mechanism at work. Um, that is, if you shorten the bars on, you know, down to a minute or two minutes, something like that, if it's a thinly traded stock and there's only a couple of ticks in each bar, it, the trading setups just aren't going to work. work. Um, you want to see a lot of activity inside of each bar so that we can see that price formation mechanism um, doing its thing. Um, it, it's just really, really important that there be enough liquidity in each bar. And that's virtually the only constraint. Other than that, you know, adapt them to suit your your, your needs and, and, and your whims. So Bollinger Bands do not provide continuous advice. This is really, you know, a conundrum for many people. I, I, I'll go out to these conferences and such like that. Somebody walk up to me with a chart and they'll point to the hard right edge of the chart and they'll say, what do I do now? And I, I say, wait for a setup. And that's the key. What we're doing here is we're using Bollinger Bands and the companion indicators to try to find trading setups. Um, and specifically trading setups where the odds of success are in our favor and the amount that we have to risk to take the trade is less than the potential reward. Uh, so we go through the price structure um, and, and look for those setups. When we find one, we can, we can place a trade with, with reasonable parameters, with reasonable risk parameters, I, I should say um, and that that's the key there will often be for a given stock long periods where you don't you know you don't not getting any real setup information from Bollinger Bands and the wonderful part about trading stocks is there's thousands of them so you just move on to another stock to find an opportunity um, the same thing in the forex market you know if you're trading forex you just move on to another currency pair to try to find an opportunity or you can shift time frames to um, find an opportunity. Often in consolidations, for example, if you shrink down the time frame, you can find opportunities um, to good setups at, at shorter time frames within that longer term consolidation. So um, again, we're looking for setups with that to increase the odds of success and where our winners are likely to be greater than our losers. But the key here to all of this is that we're trying to eliminate emotions from the trading process. We're trying to find rigorous places um, where we can make decisions um, that are uninfluenced by emotions. So in order to go any further, I want to introduce you to a couple of Bollinger Band indicators. We're going to look at percent B and bandwidth today. So ben, percent B tells us where we are in relation to the Bollinger Bands. Percent B is the distance from the last price to the lower Bollinger Band divided by the distance from the upper band to the lower band. Those of you who are familiar with technical analysis uh, um, will recognize that that's a formula, same as the formula for stochastics. All we've done is substitute the values of the bands for the periodic highs and the periodic lows. In fact, the formula for stochastics is such a powerful indicator, I call it the Swiss army knife of technical indicators. And it's the heart and soul of any number of, of uh, um, technical indicators. So um, the first thing we're gonna look at today is the 
perhaps the simplest Bollinger band setup, and they're just two bar reversals. Um, the ideal two bar reversal is both bars are greater than the average true range, um, and the close outside of the upper band followed immediately by a close inside the upper band. Sometimes um, you can have one day in between, um, so it's a, actually a three bar reversal, but I prefer the clean two bar reversals. Break outside of the upper band, next period, close back inside the lower band. Both bars greater than average true range. That's the definition of two, two bar reversal. And it can be at the upper band for a cell signal or it can be at the lower band um, for a buy signal. The nice thing about these setups is the stop is, is, is immediately available. If you make a, a new high after a two bar reversal at the upper band, it's time to get out of the trade. If you make a new low after a two bar reversal at the lower band, again, it's time to get out of the trade. So defining your stops with these two bar reversals is really easy. So um, here's one of my favorite trading stocks, ANET. Um, and you can see just turn in two bar reversal after two bar reversal after two bar reversal, each leading to relatively short term trading um, opportunities. Um, the, if you look at this one, this is one of those that breaks the rule. This is a, a three bar reversal, but it leads to a nice trading opportunity. Um, and then these are all two, two bar reversals. Um, the key here um, is that you want to be outside of the lower band and then immediately get back inside the lower band. Here's, this is a, a perfect example. Um, so, um, we use percent B to, to locate these. Um, you will we'll find that percent, uh, at a, for a two bar reversal at the upper band, percent B will be a value greater than one. And for a two bar reversal at the lower band, percent B will be a that value less than zero. So the second indicator I want to introduce you today is bandwidth. Um, bandwidth tells us how wide the Bollinger Bands are. It's a very simple indicator in terms of calculation. Simply the upper band minus the lower band divided by the middle band. And we use the we use bandwidth to locate squeezes and bulges. A squeeze is a 125 period low in bandwidth, and a bulge is 125 period high in bandwidth. But those are, are pretty dry mathematical definitions. Um, more importantly, a squeeze is where trends are born and a bulge is where trends go to die. Um, and we see this time and time and time again. On the next chart, um, the S's stand for squeeze and the B stands for bulge. On some of the later charts, especially some of the ones that Zoe will show you, the S um, stands for sell and the B stands for buy. Um, but on these charts, we're talking about squeezes and, and bulges. So um, on the left-hand side here, we see a, a, a classic squeeze here that leads to a, a breakdown. We can see that 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 um, bandwidth here is at 125 period low. These black reference lines on bandwidth on the Metastock platform, these, this is the 125 period high and this is the 125 period low. So you can tell you're in a squeeze when you tag that lower band. And over here on the right-hand side, you can tell you're in a bulge when um, price, when bandwidth rallies and um, then turns down. That's the end of the bulge. So. On the left-hand side, we have a sh relatively short-term um, squeeze setup where, where price comes in and squeeze and get a breakdown um, and a decline. And on the right-hand side, we use this bulge to mark the end of this major downtrend um, you, where you get this really big expansion in bandwidth, which means that it's really big expansion in vol market volatility. And as soon as, it as soon as bandwidth starts to turn down, um, you you get a um, you you get an indication that that downtrend is at an end, and then look over here. You have a a, a longer kind of squeeze, and we're just breaking out of it now um, as we speak. 
Um, so you can follow this. You can follow this trade over the next few days um, and see how it works out. So those are the basic Bollinger Band tools. The indicators percent B and bandwidth can be used with any trading bands, whether Keltner bands or Donchian bands or whatsoever. They're obviously de designed for Bollinger Bands, but you know these concepts of trading bands are, are are pretty universal. Trading bands been around for very long time while well, i believe the bollinger bands are the best trading bands you can lose because they're the most adaptive um, uh, there are many other types of trading bands and for for example um, uh, keltner bands um, are, are quite popular when combined with bollinger bands to identify squeezes and bulges so a couple of tips here um, we'd li all like to buy the bottom but that's uh but it's better to miss the very bottom tick and wait for confirmation, um, typically a confirmation bar going up. Um, thus, the odds of a success will be much greater. Um, and that, that, that idea wait, you know, runs throughout the entire Bollinger Band complex. We want to wait for confirmation. Bollinger Bands identify setups, and then we want price to confirm the setups so that we know that the odds of our success are in our favor. And finally, um, use stops for pattern trades. I like progressive stops like chandeliers, but this, the type of stop matters much less than establishing a point where you exit a trade that moves against you. Um, and you know, it's just really important, avoid sunk cost fallibilities. Just because you bought it doesn't mean that you got to own it. And just because you sold it doesn't mean you have to stay short. Um, if the trade goes against you, you know, be a big boy or girl and um, own up to it and get out of it. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Zoe, um, who is going to show you a lot of these setups on Metastock. And um, specifically, she'll point out some of these uh, uh, some of these ideas where you know this the stop is really readily identifiable, the initial stop. So and, and with that, here's Zoe. Hi everyone. Let me nice to see you all. Let me just share Metastock with you. Um, Jeff, if you can confirm that you're seeing this correctly, um, I can. I can see. I can see Metastock. I can see a scan. Perfect. Perfect. That's what we're hoping for. Um, you're all good to go then. It looks great. All right. So. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. Um, I'm going to just build off of a little bit of what John shared with you earlier and show how you can use some of the Bollinger Band tools that are available in Metastock to find setups like this and, and really play with it and adapt it to your trading style. So with the Bollinger Band toolkit, there's a whole set of resources. Um, there's a whole set of indicators that you can play with, including a number of which um, aren't available in a lot of other places. So you can really take the time to go through and play with these and build your own systems. You can see um, a little bit of a list of what they are here. But what I'm gonna focus today is some areas that we've really put these together for you already to make them accessible and to make it easy to find um, some of these trading opportunities. So one of the really powerful areas, if you come into your power console with the toolkit is in the explorations. We have a set of both um, some more simple, just finding stocks where the price is in different relationship to the Bollinger Bands, and also a set of methods that I'll get into a little bit later. Um, and you can go ahead and run screens for these against the list of your choice. So if you're interested in US stocks, large cap, small cap, um, whatever you like to trade and whatever data you have, you can run these against that. To be mindful of everyone's time, I, you know, they run pretty quick, but I ran a set of all of the screens against the S&P 500 just before we started. 
Um, and so I'll go through and point out to you a couple of the different ones that you might find useful. So in terms of percent B, John introduced a set of trades around the idea of two bar reversals. And you know, clicking through stock by stock to find those can be pretty tedious. But with the expiration section, we have these two screens back in from above and back in from below that give you a set of these that are pretty easy to find and click through. Not every one of these is going to be that optimal two bar reversal that John was talking about where you have a big bar, a bar that's greater than the average true range that breaks out and then immediately breaks back in. But it gives you a really nice subset to look through. So if we pull this up, I'm gonna just click through a couple of these. If you run one of the screens, you can pull it up. The other thing that I will talk to you about a little bit later is some of the templates that are available. Um, but I'm gonna start just with John's favorite sort of basic trading setup, which is Bollinger Bands in the upper clip, and then percent B and bandwidth in the lower clips to help you identify each of these trading setups. So this first one from the screen, we see we have that really nice big bar that breaks up out of the upper bands, but maybe not exactly the two bar reversal setup. You're looking for this second bar that is up here is kind of, while it went back in towards the bottom of the daily range, it's holding above that a little bit right now. So you might wanna keep clicking through. And you'll go through and you'll see all sorts of different types of examples. You know, back here earlier in the chart, this is sort of a beautiful example of one of those two bar reversals. Um, this one may or may not set up into one, but it gives you a really nice way to click through, find stocks that you like. This is a pretty classic example um, where we see a big bar up and then a slam right back into the upper band. And as John points out, these are really like those perfect spots where if you put a stop just above here, if your next bar reverses back up, you know this setup didn't go your way and you're out flat, maybe down a tiny bit and you can move on to the next setup. But if it continues to go down, you have that at your disposal. And so these in these back in from above would be more of a mean reversion trade where you're looking for a short. Um, back in from below would give you more of um, the long side potential trade. So if we pull up the first of those, um, we see we've got a couple of reversals here on the on the right hand side. So this is maybe not exactly that massive bar, but it's still a pretty nice setup. You have a, a meaningful down and then a meaningful reversal back in. So this is another one of those opportunities where you could take a look, put in a stop right here, um, and see where it goes. If it goes for you, you have a nice run up first to the middle band and then maybe a final target of the upper band. If it turns against you, you're out flat or down a tiny bit. Um, so that's not to say that this particular trade is the trade that you wanna do. It's just an example of the kind of setups that you can use with these. Um, and you can really pick the screen that's a match to your trading style. If you're someone who likes to stay long only, maybe these back in from belows are gonna show you the setups. If you're someone who likes to trade both sides or you like to play shorts, um, you know, some of those back in from above might be good candidates. Um, another really popular one is the squeeze. John mentioned squeezes and bulges. Um, and these I think are right up there in terms of the most popular Bollinger Band trade. And being able to run an exploration and just find a set of squeeze setups um, is really, really handy. So same thing, just clicked on the top of the list and we have a pretty nice example of a squeeze that it's screened for here. We have the two bands coming in to meet each other. You have bandwidth down here confirming we're actually pushing down. It's more than a touch of that previous 125 period low, we're actually pushing down below and pushing that bandwidth limit down. Um, what we really like to look for with squeeze trades like this is kind of a faster squeeze. One of these where it comes in, you get that compression and volatility, and then you see price break out from that pretty quickly. Um, we get some of these volatility compression ranges, you see that here, 
um, where you kind of come into a squeeze and you stay with it for a long time. Those can provide good trading setups, but they're just harder to trade. Um, so generally we have a preference if you see something that kind of comes in, it does that nice pinch in in the Bollinger Bands, confirmed with bandwidth, um, and then breaks right out of that. And, you know, these are the same kind of things where you can apply a stop if you get a confirmation bar breaking out to the upside or the downside, you can put a stop either above or below. And if it moves against you, you can move on to the next trade. So this is just, I'm just scrolling through. When you do an exploration meta stock, you get these nice little arrows down here that let you switch to the next instrument um, from that exploration. So I'm just clicking through in terms of our squeeze. Um, and this is actually a pretty nice example of a squeeze breakout where we've had this squeeze in here and then very quickly we got a big bar up. Um, these kind of breaks up, breakups are often what John means when he talks about looking for that confirmation bar for that indication that in fact it's moving that way. And so maybe you lose a percent of a potential trade of guessing before you get the confirmation, um, but you really get that more positive indication that the trade is gonna move in the direction that you're looking for. So, um, and th this is one of those examples where you really have a long compression in volatility and they're just harder to trade because you don't, it's very hard to tell when that next breakout is coming. Um, so those sort of sharper patterns are really what we like to look for. Um, so now that we've taken a look at kind of some of those more basic Bollinger Band explorations that look just for a relationship to the Bollinger Bands. For that, we have the squeeze. We also have, um, so just alphabetically, so we have a bulge as well, um, the back in from either above or below. And also, if you're really, if you're looking for stocks that have had sort of a volatility expansion, whether you're a trend follower or a mean reversion, you can also look for trades that are above the upper band or where the price is just currently below the lower band. Um, John also has, if you've read his book or taken a look at some of his work, as part of the book, he developed a set of Bollinger Band methods that take some of these ideas that he's already taught today and combine them with other indicators so you get a way to kind of look for some of these classic setups. And Metastock lets you do explorations for those as well. So I'll start by taking a look at method one. Method one, um, we have the nice numbers, but it refers to a volatility breakout. So this is basically coming back to that idea of a squeeze and then a pattern where we've had a breakout to the top or to above, above or below from that squeeze, indicating that we're looking at kind of the start of a volatility expansion out of that volatility compression. So if we open up, you know, it's been a pretty active time in the market, so we don't have that many results, um, but you only really need one or two good ones. Um, and you can always expand the list that you're looking at. We start with just the first stock that came in here. Um, Couple things I'll point out with the methods before we talk about what we're seeing in the chart here. So the methods come not just with the exploration, but also with really nice chart templates that kind of help you visualize what's happening. So I had this set up to just go to the method one template um, to start with, but you can always just choose apply template. Um, if you right click on a chart, you can click through and you'll get a list of the templates that are included with Metastock and also the ones from the toolkit. I just scrolled right by those, but you'll see these Bollinger Band Toolkit, Method 1, 2, 3, 4, um, a Bollinger Band sort of default and the volume indicators. So I also, because this is what we use, I've got them saved down here in the bar so that I can easily just apply the method toolkit that I'm, the method template that I'm looking for. So those I think are really helpful to kind of see these setups. 
So this first one that opened up has a pretty nice example of a squeeze and then a breakout. This is the template that John was talking about in his presentation where the S and the B, rather than meaning sort of the usual sell and buy um, or short and long, depending how they're charted. The S here, if you hover over, you'll see it's telling you that there's a squeeze or the B will tell you that there's a bulge. So if you ever see some of these signals or chart annotations, you're like, hmm, S could mean a lot of different things. You can always just hover and it'll tell you what you're looking at. So here we had a nice, we had bandwidth come down, we had it tag the lower limit, that 125 period low, push it down a little bit. Um, and then we had price break out above the upper band. So this is a nice one that you can keep an eye on. Um, and we had the same looking a little bit farther back in the chart. We had this longer downtrend um, that ended and this is sort of a pretty quick little version of a Bollinger Band W bottom. Um, and you see we get volatility turning down here. It forms a bulge and then turns down and that sort of flattens out and ends up being the end of this downtrend. Um, the other really nice thing with these templates and with the methods in Metastock mm -hmm. is they also have what Metastock calls an expert. So if you right click um, and you come over to this expert advisor menu, there's a little bit of commentary uh, that you can take a look at that'll give you a couple things. Um, It'll tell you, depending on the method, some different pieces of information. So for this one, we've got a bullish breakout. It gives you some potential stops that you could use depending a Bollinger Band stop or a chandelier stop and what those stop levels could be. And then if you want a little reminder about what the current method you're looking at is, it gives you a little background that method one, it's a volatility breakout system um and sort of what it's looking for a squeeze and what the different factors are that it's considering so it can be a really nice tool for just a refresher and you can actually it always starts on the far right bar but if you want to learn a little bit about what it said for a past setup you can always use um little arrow keys to move this guy around and the commentary will appear for the bar that you want to look at um so that's method one to give you a quick look at a couple of the different methods so you get an idea. Um, so the volatility breakout method one is really looking for that squeeze and that breakout either to the upside or the downside. Method two is a trend following system. So this is looking for those scenarios that John mentioned earlier where a touch of the band doesn't actually mean mean reversion where we can see a walk up the upper band in a bull market or an upward trend for a given stock and we can see a walk down the lower band for a stock in a bear trend um so same thing you can run a little screen for method two against the list that you want and you'll get this nice results list and you can click in we'll just grab the first one today and take a look at it um, I have the method one template set as my default at the moment. So I'm gonna go through and just apply the method two template so that we're seeing the signals for the screen that we did. Um, and that will actually stick as you scroll through, um, unless you're in smart charts, in which case you're gonna to wanna to reapply the template as you click through. Um, but if you have smart charts off, which I do at the moment, um, this template will stick with you as you go. And reminder, even though I grabbed mine from the bar down below, you can always add a template just by clicking apply template in here. So trend following, and actually fortunately number one gave us a really nice example of something where we see a real walk up the upper bands. And you'll see the system gave you a signal back here. We had our price breakout about above above the upper Bollinger Band, which you see confirmed down here in percent B, so we break out above the upper Bollinger Band. Um, and because we're looking for a trend following opportunity in this case, it gives you that suggestion that you might wanna enter long here and see where this goes. 
this is another really good example where pop a stop right underneath. And if it turns around and it is a two bar reversal or you get a shorter run up than you expected, you get out with a small gain um, and you move on to your next opportunity. But this one worked with us really nicely. If you popped a stop, um, we're still in on this. Um, you can see it'll give you, we had an entry here um, and the system will give you an exit in this case, but I often prefer to use my own stop. It allows you to kind of set that distance that you're looking for tighter or looser, depending on what you're trading and, and what your comfort level is. This also has that nice little expert advisor. So you can come over and take a look at the commentary um, and it'll give you, you know, this one sort of visibly is in a strong bullish trend um, where the stops might be if you had entered around here with either stop type um, and maybe most importantly, just that nice reminder about what the method is, what other indicators it's pulling into place um, and how those factors play together so that you can get a quick reminder of what you're looking at. The last system or the last of the methods that I'll show you today is um, method three, which is a reversal. So this ties in <clears throat> nicely with that two bar reversal piece that John showed you. Um, and some of it, you know, there's an interesting point here. Method two is looking for trend following examples and method three is looking for reversals. It's looking for mean reversion rather than something that's following a trend. So depending on your trading style, um, you might prefer one or the other. And there are definitely times where when something breaks out above the upper band, method two will signal you have a possible trending pattern and method three will signal you have a possible reversal pattern. Um, and so it really, it comes down to your trading style and how you use your stops to decide which type of trade you wanna take, um, what's comfortable. And you know, some of that depends also what you're trading. Um, Forex pairs might have more of a tendency towards mean reversion. Um, growth stocks might have more of a tendency towards trending. So you kind of want to take a look at these and figure out what's a good fit for you. But we'll pull method three here. And you know, the responses in this are always just in alphabetical order. You can click through, pick the one of your choosing. Um, it'll pull up a nice chart for you, and then you can scroll through until you find a setup. And same as the other, I defaulted into the method one, um, which actually has quite a nice bulge here. You get sort of a nice little W bottom, that bulge indicating the end of that trend, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for mean reversion and reversals. So we're gonna add the method three template and take a look at what it's showing us. I'm gonna pull this extra indicator off of there so that we can see it more clearly for the presentation or not, as the case may be. All right, we'll leave it there. This is giving you a nice example where we've had a breakout above the upper band. Um, you know, it had an up day, it had another big reversal. This would fall probably into that two bar reversal category. Um, and it's just back in the upper band here. So that's a pretty nice example. Same old, same old. If you're taking a short from this, you can pop a stop right above here. Um, and if it turns around and keeps going, then you can get out quickly. Otherwise you might have a nice ride back down to the middle or lower band. And we see a couple nice examples across this chart. It's always interesting when you get these big gap downs like this, you'll almost always get one of these reversal signals that comes in with them when you're looking at this system, but they're often a pretty decent indicator. And we had a nice bottom reversal here and a nice set of signals here that also gave us um, a reversal down from the end of that uptrend and a little cluster of them here earlier on. So 
I think I'm at about the amount of time that we wanted so that we could still give you some time to ask questions of either John or myself or Jeff. Um, so I'll turn it back over to you guys, but I hope you found it useful and take some time, explore some of these indicators, explore some of the setups, and um, hopefully they work for you as you find trades within your own trading approach. Jeff, I'll right. give it back to you. Okay, do you want me to give you some questions? Yeah, shoot through. I'll have John do me. <laughs> cool. Uh, great then, job, Zoe, too. That was, uh, I thought you did a really, really good job. And so did Kelly. Oh, you. me. <laughs> so, um, John wants to know: Would be a would a bulge be the same as expanding bands, and a squeeze be the same thing as constricting bands? So, um, a bulge is it, it, you're essentially correct, but a bulge is the result of expanding bands, and a squeeze is the result of tightening bands. Um, so, it's not just the, that the bands um, it's not just that the bands are expanding. What's really interesting is to wait for, for example, in a bulge, to wait for it to top out and turn down. That almost always marks the end of a trend. Um, it may not mean an immediate reversal. We could go into consolidation in, instead, but it's a very, very good end of trend indicator. Yeah, cool. Brian wants to know, it seems that if the percent B hits the bottom on the daily, a good entry could possibly be to then monitor the hourly chart. What do you think? Um, yeah, um, um, that's absolutely useful. Um, one of the things that I always talk about is the importance of waiting for confirmation. So if you want to shift down in time frame to look for that confirmation, um, the important thing to me is that you shift back to your main time frame to monitor the trade. Um, what happens all the time with this is that people shift down to a lower time frame for confirmation and, and or execution, and then they stay stuck on that lower time frame and they get shaken out of a trade that they shouldn't have been shaken out of. Um, so um, I think it's important that you choose what time frame you're using for your primary analysis and stick to that time frame most of the time. Cool. Thank you, John. Um, Saeed wanted to know, have you back tested the setup strategies? Do you know what this expectancy or winning statistics looks like? So it really depends on what you trade and it varies dramatically. Um, for example, a couple of years ago or more than a couple of years ago, I got really interested in cryptocurrencies because they exhibited terrific statistics, much stronger than the statistics we were seeing in the um, US mar market, either for stocks or, or futures. So it's a large function of what it is that you're trading. Um, and also, um, it's very important um, the time frames that you're trading in what works um, for XYZ on the daily chart um, may not work for um, ABC on that same daily chart, but ABC might work really well on the hourly chart. So it's important that you test exactly what it is that you're going to trade um, and determine the statistics based on your approach and what you want from it. I would uh, say. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, these are like, especially the explorations. Um, I don't think they're necessarily. They're not necessarily intended for you to trade every single thing that comes up in that exploration. In terms of when we're thinking about back testing these systems, um, mm. you know what they are are aids to let you make discretionary trades. So in the same way, I scrolled through a couple of them when we were looking at the charts and I was like, okay, yeah, that's like interesting, but not a setup that I would trade. Like interesting, but doesn't have the exact characteristics that I would trade. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think they're designed to be each and every yeah. thing that pops as a result. The explorations really produce candidate lists yeah. and it's it's up to you to winnow those candidates down in into the opportunities that you uh, feel comfortable with and can trade comfortably. 
just to I, I love the scanner too the other thing that i kind of thought of and i almost forgot was you can also test them so if there are yeah you had said that that they vary dramatically depending on what in markets you're interested in there are tests available in metastock where you can test them against your market yeah exactly yeah. And, and you should absolutely use those to make sure that what you think you're doing is actually um, a useful thing to be doing. Cool. Des Patrick says, by the way, I love your Bollinger Bands. They are a tool that I have been able to find and use profitably. He also said, my strategy has Bollinger Bands as the centerpiece and is my baby. <laughs> so not a question. Just a double just thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, he did have a question a little bit earlier though. And um, he wanted to know uh, like, and I tried to answer this, and I'm interested to see if I answered it. Uh, uh, well, I, I know I didn't answer it as good as you will. But he says, John, my apologies if this question has been answered. But can you explain in the simplest way what's, why sometimes the bands go away from each other and other times they point in the same direction? And your answer, Jeff? OK, so I said, well, in the simplest way I can explain it, the bands point away when volatility is increasing and they point together when volatility is decreasing. Since yeah, they hug high, so... go ahead. That's the core of, that, that, that's the, core of, of the issue. Um, one way to think about it is the bands, if you've been in a long-term consolidation, the bands will start to expand as a trend develops, whether it's an uptrend or a, a downtrend. So it's price movement away from the mean that um, determines the width of the bands. Yeah, like that. Cool, awesome. That's, that's I think, the questions we have time for. And um, great job. I really appreciate both of you guys for coming in. Um, well, thank, thank you. You know, Jeff, just before you run, you should also tell them about the Bollinger Band system that you guys have programmed because that, that can be a very useful tool for those people who don't wish to, um, who, who don't wish to, um, you know, find their own trades. Oh, absolutely. I actually, um, I was gonna show quite a bit of it, but Zoe did such a good job showing it off. So they're gonna talk about it quite a bit and kind of talk about a special. Um, uh, I also wanted to kind of show the book that we have here and uh, talk about how to, this is a great book. But the Bollinger Band Toolkit includes all the indicators that are in this book and quite a bit of other things. So I will definitely do that. Cassie says, thank you very, very much. And then uh, Des says, thank you. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a special offer we have for the Bollinger Band Toolkit and all that kind of good stuff. Um, I want to say thank you guys, both of you for coming. Uh, great job. I really appreciate all of the time over the years and everything you guys have done with us and for us. And it's been a great uh, journey, for sure. Oh, always a pleasure to work with you, Jeff. Always good to see you. Very cool. Well, so let me talk about the special then. Thanks, guys. Um, uh, I will just... <laughs> let me go ahead and make me the presenter of my screen. And um, just want to kind of just talk about really the things that are included, uh, because it's a massive toolkit. And I've seen a lot of a lot of programs out there that talk about, you know, squeezes and that's kind of what you get and that kind of stuff. Um, John Bollinger wrote this book. It's called John Bollinger. Well, actually, it's called Bollinger on Bollinger Bands by John Bollinger. Uh, but it does a really, really good job of talking about different strategies and different setups and covers a lot of indicators. And when we start to talk about what's included in the toolkit, all of the indicators in the Bollinger on Bollinger Bands are included. And I actually made a complete list of them. And they're all right here. So I'm not going to read these all out. It's just a ton of different indicators that you can use, that you can work with, that you can implement. And every single indicator that's in this book is in here. And if you don't have the book, I recommend a copy. Of, I believe it was published by McGraw-Hill. So, um, but in addition to that, Zoe did a good job of talk about talking about scanning. And scanning is one of those things that I think the MESTOC does really, really well. And I loved it when Zoe talked about how, you know, uh, this is a way to build a quick watch list. Because certainly, like, what you want to be able to do when you're scanning is build a big, well, or actually, I prefer a small list of stocks. And then say, okay, well, I like this one because of this or this one because of this. 
And the, the, the ability for Metastock to go through and find the scans, and find, be, identify the stocks that are hitting those parameters is something that I use every time I trade. I love scanning in Metastock. And so this will help you with the toolkit. It'll help you find stocks that are uh, like Zoshoja above the upper band, that are bulging, that are back in from above or below, uh, that are below the lower band. They'll also find those squeezes for you and all of the methods. So I've got a write-up of the methods and I'll talk a little bit more about what those are and what they do. Um, and then there's also one that's just for bandwidth and whether it's green uh, and above volume. So uh, in terms of system tests, we talked a little bit about system tests, all of these methods you can test. There's two different versions. As you can see, there's a, a method one and a method one that also uses chandelier exits. Both of those you can test. So if you do wanna know what that expectancy is, for the stocks that you're interested in, you can absolutely look for that. So um, uh, very, very cool. So just to kind of give you an overview of the different methodologies and what they do, uh, Zoe showed you how to show you the buy and sell signals. She showed you how the commentary looks on the chart. I love commentary too, not as much as scanning, but I love the fact that it kind of helps you understand what's going on there. But uh, so method one's an elegant approach to using Bollinger Bands as a breakout system, okay? Two is more of a trend following system that relies on the idea that strong price actions accompanied by strong indicators is indicative of a positive forecast. So method three is more of a reversal system. It anticipates upcoming reversals by comparing tags of Bollinger Bands with indicator of price trend. And method four is a direct pattern-based approach uh, for those traders looking to unlock the full poem Bollinger Bands. So, and it uses if I remember right, it, it's like a four point pattern system. So uh, all of those are included. You can scan for them. They're methods that are common as part of the box. So this is a really, really big toolkit. There's four explorations, sorry, four experts, <laughs> 10 explorations, nine, system, nine system tests, and 47 different custom indicators, all included in this Poland Man toolkit. And I think it's underpriced. Uh, I really do. Like if we look at kind of what's available, in this ad on all of the indicators, all the systems, everything that's in there, it's only $49 per month. And so you can get that, um, you get all those indicators, all the tools, and honestly, like there's a lot of different systems that you wear, it's just a squeeze-based method. That's part of it too, right? So we are gonna do a little bit of a webinar special. If you purchase your first month of Bollinger Band Toolkit number two, we're gonna give you the second and third month for free. So we're also gonna extend that offer to Metastock. So if you haven't used Metastock before, if you've never tried it before, if you've just heard about it, uh, this year Metastock has been rated number one, the 31st year in a row, uh, a best uh, software in its price category. And uh, pricing on Metastock starts at about $69 a month for end of day and about 210 or so dollars per month for real time. If you want to try this out, um, what we'll do is we'll have you pay for your first month we'll give you your second and third month for free. You can do that if you're already a Metastock user. Thank you, appreciate that, that's awesome. Uh, I'm glad you're part of Metastock. If you're not, uh, it would be a great time to try it out and see why it's been rated so highly for so long. And uh, so you can do that. Uh, to do that, give us a call. Uh, we're here at 800-882-3040. Uh, you can visit us at metastock.com slash sales chat, or you can go to metastock.com slash John Bollinger A. Couple last thoughts. Cassie says, thank you so much. Akira says, uh, excellent presentation. Thank you. Um, I want to say thank you to all of you guys for coming. I want to say thanks for, to John and to Zoe for spending some time with us again today. Um, if you enjoyed it, make sure you hit the like. As John said at the very beginning, it'll make me happy. And uh, I do appreciate you coming here. Give this a try. It's great. Uh, has all the tools that John talks about. And, uh, so they did such a great job of showing how useful they can be in the Metastock engine. So thanks for coming, everybody. Stay healthy, stay well. See you at the next one. Hi, Kelly Clement here from Metastock. Before you go, I have two quick things for you. One, thanks for joining us today. We love having you here at our webinars and viewing our videos. So what I'd like to invite you to do before you go is like and subscribe. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. It helps us a great deal and it helps us bring you more awesome content like today's video. The second thing is we have a great ebook on trading that you can get for free. 
If you go to metastock.com slash YouTube book, you can get a free copy of The Secrets of Successful Traders. It's a great book with lots of content from traders just like yourself who can teach you some of the secrets that they have learned. Thanks for taking a second with me and learning about those two things. Thanks for joining us and keep on trading.